Hey everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a paper server in Minecraft 1.18. Paper is the best way to host a Minecraft server. Not only can you get all of the features that vanilla Minecraft servers have, you can also add plugins, spigot, bucket, and paper plugins to a paper Minecraft server. And on top of all of that, paper has tons of lag reduction features that make Minecraft run smoother on your server. From things that infect chunk loading, to things that infect entity performance, to even a better TNT and redstone fix that makes those work more efficiently. Paper is by far the best Minecraft server software that you can use and we're going to go over every single step of getting your Paper MC server set up and running in this video. First and most though, this isn't a server that's meant to be made public, it is a server that's meant to be kept private because it's hosted on your own computer's network and it's using your own computer's resources. On top of all of that, it also is hosted on your public IP address which means anyone who gets the IP address of this server can do things like DDoS you and do all sorts of crazy stuff. So it's important that you don't make the server we're making here public and you only keep it to your friends and family, people that you trust. However, if you do want to start your own server and you want to make it public or you just don't want to have to worry about things like hardware management and all of that stuff, you want the simplest way possible to make a paper server, then you need to use someone like Apex Minecraft Hosting who happens to be the sponsor of this video. You can go to the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your Minecraft server quickly and easily running paper for Minecraft 1.18. Like I said, paper is the best way to host a server, and Apex is the easiest way to host a server. So you combine those two, and it is absolutely incredible. That's actually what we do for our own public server, playdarbreakdowncraft.com. But we also have a private server that just me and a few friends play on. And guess what? That server is also hosted on Apex Minecraft hosting using paper. I cannot recommend Apex enough. We love them, we trust them, we use them ourselves, and it's the best way to host a public or private server, as well as the easiest way to host a server, because you don't have to worry about port forwarding, you don't have to worry about hardware management, any of that stuff. So again, you can check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown to XYZ slash Apex to get your server up and running. Anyway though, if you still wanna host a paper server and you don't wanna use someone like Apex to do it, let's go ahead and jump on in to exactly how to do that. The first thing you wanna do is go to the second link down below. That's gonna take you here. This is our basically text tutorial for making a paper server. This video you're watching now will be up here while 1.18 is out. Once a new version comes out, it'll be updated. That is the way that you can always make sure you have the most up-to-date version of paper is by checking this video here. Nevertheless, once you're here, you can scroll down and click on the yellow download paper button. So basically download paper MC, and that will take you to the official paper download page. Once you're here, as you can see up at the top, currently 1.18 is experimental. That means I probably wouldn't update any old servers to 1.18 with paper just yet. I would wait until this red banner goes away, but it's fine for starting a new server uh, and, and kind of getting your feet wet with it. Just make sure you're taking consistent backups and things like that. Nevertheless, though, we do want to make sure paper 1.18 is clicked there. There's a little faint line under paper 1.18, but you can also just click on it to be sure. Then you want to come down here to the bottom and click the blue download button on the very top basically download here. Now this number over here may be different, and if it is, that's a good thing, because that means you're getting more bug fixes, more improvements on Minecraft server software. So you just want to make sure you download under the first button right here, that blue download button. Now if up here at the top you have kind of like other like sort of resources, you can click those if one's recommended, but overall under other builds, the top one is going to be the most recent, so click that blue download button. Then when you click that blue download button in the bottom left, it's going to download paper. Now I actually didn't have to keep the file, maybe they have gotten on Google Chrome's trusted list, but you may need to keep the file in the bottom left. It's 100% safe to keep the file, and on Mozilla Firefox, you may have to save the file on your screen over your screen, and that's also 100% safe to do so. Paper is used by millions of Minecraft servers. We can now go ahead and minimize our browser, and we need to create a new folder on our desktop. I'm going to name this play.breakdowncraft.com because that's our own incredible Minecraft 1.18 survival on Skyblock server. You should come play on it, but you can kind of name this folder whatever you want. But you do need to create a folder that's basically going to house your paper server on your desktop. Then we need to go find the paper file we downloaded. In my case, that's going to be found in the downloads folder. Just click the little Windows icon on the, in the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen. Put that little Windows folder in the top and bottom left. Type in downloads. Yeah, this downloads file folder here. Click on that, and then in here you will find paper 1.18. We can then drag and drop that into the folder we created. You might also drag it to your desktop and then into the folder, whatever works. But nevertheless, you want to drag and drop this into the folder you created. Once we open that, that paper file should be there. And now what we want to do is go ahead and right click on this file and rename it. So right click, rename, and then we just simply want to name it paper, right? That's all we want to do. Now mine has dot jar at the end. If yours doesn't, you can make it say that by clicking view and then clicking file name extensions. For example, if I unselect that, as you can see, mine's now just called paper. Before I renamed it, it would have just simply been that. But if I click on file name extensions, it gets the dot jar back. 
But again, you want to make sure that this file is just renamed paper, either paper with no.jar or paper.jar. As long as it is an executable jar file file type, you're good to go. Nevertheless, though, we can now go ahead and right click in here and create a new text document. You can just leave that title new text document and then go ahead and open it up. Then you want to go to the description down below and find this code here. Now there's two in the description. There's this one, which is for two gigabytes of RAM. And there's another one that's for four gigabytes of RAM. Either one of those is going to work. And if you do want to add more RAM, you can just change this first number here to however much RAM you want. For example, if you change it to a three and this one to a three, it's going to be three gigs of RAM. However, we're going to go ahead and leave it at two gigs of RAM just for basically ease of use here. And two gigabytes is usually enough for a simple test server. Nevertheless, once you've got this pasted in here, we want to go ahead and do file save as, and then we want to save this as a run.bat file. So my file name is run.bat and then save type as is all files. So file name run.bat, save type as all files, click save. Then we can close out of this file. You can delete the new text document because you should now have a run.bat file that the file type is a Windows batch file. Go ahead and double click on that. And as long as you've renamed the paper.jar, this will go ahead and generate some things, assuming you have the correct version of Java. Now mine has failed and that is normal because you need to agree to the ULA.txt. So if this does work and it does generate these files, awesome. But what if you double clicked on the run.bat file and it gave any error whatsoever? Well, what that means is that you need to download download and install Java 17. Java 17 is now required for both Minecraft mods, Minecraft servers, and that includes paper. Actually, when we ran that, I'll show you real fast. When you double click on the run.bat file, you will see that it says Java 17 right here. That means it's opening with Java 17, right? Simple as that. You need Java 17, and this is our in-depth guide on downloading and installing it. It goes through every single step, but it's simply three steps, and this video is very straightforward if you do prefer our video content. Now, at that point, you should be able to double click the run.bat file, and it should work. But if you're still having issues, it could be one of two things. One, it might just be you need to run the jar fix. This is the simplest thing to do. It takes 30 seconds, run the jar fix, and see if that works. It's also linked, by the way, in the description down below, right under Java. If that does work, awesome, you're good to go. But if you still double click on the run.bat file and it fails, it's because you need to go to apps and features, and then you need to scroll down and uninstall the version of Java that's not Java 17. So if I come in here, I can see right here it is Java Kit 17. If you have that, you're good to go. But if you have another one, Java 16, Java Kit 8, something like that, you want to uninstall it by clicking on it, clicking uninstall, and then going through the prompts there. Nevertheless, though, at this point, you should be able to double click on the run.bat file, and then it should go ahead and try to start your server. Now, as you can see, mine's a bit glitched here because I, uh, I yeah, there we go. <laughs> but nevertheless, now you can run dot, double click the run.bat, it will start your server, and you'll get the eula.txt file. Open that up, change eula equals false to eula equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that, and then click file, save. Boom, done. Now we want to go ahead, double click on the run.bat file, and this time your Minecraft server will fire right on up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to join this server yourself, but your friends will join it completely differently. So just hold on a second. I'm going to link out to our in-depth guide on how to get your friends to join this server, but let's go ahead and show you how you can join it real fast because if you can't join it, there's no reason for your friends to join it. I mean, maybe there is, but in most cases, that would be true. So let's go ahead. I'm going to open up Minecraft 1.18, do a quick jump cut, and I'll meet you on the main menu. So here we are. Our server is fired up. As you can see, done over here. You can go ahead and op yourself in the server, by the way, if you want, by typing OP and then your username, right like so can see, made myself a username or made myself a, uh, an operator. Now we can go ahead and click on multiplayer and click direct connection. When you click on direct connection, how you're going to join your Minecraft server is always going to be with local host, right? Just type in local host exactly like that and click join server. Now this is assuming that your server is hosted on the same computer that you're playing Minecraft on. If it's not, in that case, you're going to go ahead and use your IPv4 address, which you'll need to be able to port forward anyway. But whenever we find that IPv4 address, that is what you'll use to join your server. However, assuming it's like this one and it's hosted on the same computer as you're playing Minecraft on, localhost will do it. That's a cool seed. <laughs> but nevertheless, this is, as you can see, Minecraft 1.18. I don't think there's any denying that by how crazy this biome is. But what if you want your friends to join this server? That's what most servers are for, right? Well, in that case, you want to go ahead and go to the description down below and go here. This is how to port forward for a Minecraft server, and this video goes in depth. As you can see, nearly half a million people have watched it. Over 10% of people who've watched it have liked it. It helps you port forward. It goes in depth. And then in the description of this video, you have all of these awesome guides, including 
fix Windows Defender. So if you get port forwarding done and for whatever reason, you're still having friends like issues timing out when joining your server, it might be Windows Defender blocking it. That's linked there as well as how to fix server issues. If you do have issues with your server, that video gets over 30 minutes long and it is the in-depth guide for troubleshooting a Minecraft server. So nevertheless, that is how you can set a paper server up. You've got it created. At this point, you can go ahead and allow your friends to join by going and port forwarding and getting all of that done. Or if you just want this server to test some plugins and things like that for yourself, you now have the server set up and it's good to do that. Speaking of plugins, check out the video on your screen right now as well as the eye at the top of your screen on how to add plugins to a Minecraft server. That's going to go in depth on how to add plugins to this server right here. So now that you've got a paper server, you are 95% of the way there to adding plugins to it. So be sure to check that out in the description down below as well as on your screen right now. Anyway, my name is Nick. If this video did help you start a Minecraft server, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content every single day of the week. Nevertheless, again, my name is Nick. This has been a long outro and I'm out. Peace. Sorry for the hard cut after the outro there. I just want to mention this really quick. I know, unfortunately, a lot of people don't make it to the end of these videos, so you might want to go into the comments down below if you have and say, hey, watch from this timestamp if you want to know how to stop the server correctly because you need to stop the server by typing STOP over here. Stop, right like so in the console and then hit enter. That's how you want to shut down your server, right like so. If you don't shut down your server that way, you can have issues restarting it. You just have to kind of restart your computer and then you'll be able to restart your server without much problem. But nevertheless, that is something worth noting and something that I kind of forgot to mention in the main part of the video. So nevertheless, again, thanks for watching. I'm out. Peace.